Do it live! If we take a look at this function down here, we can see that there is a function call that Ida has defined, but the actual function doesn't exist. If we click on this, double click to show us where it exists in the disassembly view, you can see that this is a memory address, but it has not been populated. Anytime you see a function call using a memory address that has not been populated, this is guaranteed to be a dynamically resolved API. This means at runtime, this memory address will be populated with a function address, and this function will become a live function, which can be called. What we want to do is to statically determine what function address is going to be placed in this memory address so that we can replace these in our IDB and turn these into function calls. Now, Black Matter Ransomware uses an import address table concept. That means that they resolve a block of functions at a time, and then those functions are later used in the code. Some dynamic import address resolution will resolve each individual function call when it is required in the code. In that case, you would see a separate function call above or intertwined in this function call where there would be some sort of resolver function to determine what the function address is. In this case, we know that's not the method that's being used because there is a predefined memory address in memory here, which needs to be populated prior to this function call. The resolving of this API address does not take place anywhere near the function call. This tells us that we need to figure out where these memory addresses are being populated. One trick that might work is to right click on the memory address and to look for cross-references to the address. We can see that both the cross-references to ad this address are calls. This means that both of these references expect this memory address to already be populated with a function address by the time it is called here in the assembly. This means that neither one of these cross-references is going to give us any more information about what is actually placed in this memory address. This is a second tip-off that the memory addresses are being resolved in a block and are being resolved in a import address table fashion. If they were resolved on demand, we would expect to see a, another cross-reference here where there is a move instruction moving a function address individually into this memory address. That does not exist, which means that most likely this memory address is simply an entry in a large table which is iterated through by a different function and resolved at runtime. Our job now is to find where that resolving is happening and determine how those function addresses are being resolved.